There's nothing there's nothing wrong with going to school and finding a job and working but your focus should be creating your own business okay because where you're working where you will work you'll actually be making money for another entrepreneur who took the risk to start a business isn't it yes. okay and uh if you remain there for the rest of your life like we saw our parents some of our parents did they retired with nothing okay they actually retired and they're struggling okay and most of them they think of opening shops yes when someone is uh, 60 70 that's the time they're opening a shop to sell maziwa in the village okay and that cannot sustain them so what what normally happens is you find that they depend on their children quite a lot and i can assure you in the coming times children will not be interested in taking care of my, their parents but they for sure yeah because you just need to look at where the, the, the European countries are and where the American countries are to know where we will be, okay? The days of uh, children giving money to their parents, going to visit their parents, will go. Because you see in the States, people are taken to old people's homes, isn't it? Okay? Sometimes you hear about parents who die in their apartments because their children never go to see them. Don't think your children are going to do things for you, okay? As a young person, you need to start planning how your later life is going to be like, okay? Now, the best way, if you, if you go to Google, please go and look for a book called The Cash Flow Quadrant by a guy called Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki normally says, whatever you do to make money, make sure you're making money through a system. Through a what? A system. Through a system. Does, no, does anybody know what system stands for? S Y S T E M stands for save yourself some time, energy, and money. What does that mean? It means start creating a system or start creating a way of making you money while you sleep. There's someone called Warren Buffett. He said, um, if you don't make money while you sleep, you will do what? Who knows what he says? If you don't make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Okay? So always make money from a system. Now, to cut the long story short, I will say this. If you look at the Forbes, if you look at the Forbes top 10 wealthiest guys in this world, there are people who are into technology. You see, in the earlier years, the people who used to make money, the people who used to be in those lists were oil magnets, some sheikh somewhere in Saudi Arabia. It used to be people in the manufacturing industry. You know, Akina Aliko Dangote. So you know Aliko Dangote? Yeah. Those are the guys who used to dominate that list. Eh? People who are uh, in the car industry, car manufacturing industry, until the early 90s, they began getting a shock of their lives. When Forbes began listing, they realized, hey, there's some guys who check, who've checked into this list that are unknown. You know, they say seeing people names like Bill Gates. They say seeing names like what? What are the other tech guys? Zuckerberg. They say seeing Mark Zuckerberg. They're like, who the heaven are these? They began seeing names like Steve Jobs. You know, so they're wondering. Uh, is, yeah, Jack Ma, very good. So they're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Not Jackie Chan, Jack Ma. <laughs> Adi Jackie Chan. <laughs> Jack Ma. You know? So they began wondering who are these guys and where have they come from? They're not they're not the guys in our club. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not guys who are known in our clubs because we are used to dominating this list. They discovered these guys are actually guys who are into technology. The founder of Microsoft, they discovered these guys are guys who didn't finish school. Like in Malaysia, you know, they discovered these guys are less. They are, they are, they are less than 30 years old. Their guys were 28. So they are like, what? You see what's happening? You know, there's someone who normally says where we are right now is the revenge of the nerds. The revenge of the nerds. What do you think the revenge of the nerds mean? It means, you know, you know those guys who are techie guys, eh? They're those who will be considered nerds. What, 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 what,
Obi na da apa. Eh, eh. But yeah, you know, ona 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 kwanga na nyule ntaidi, ona vanga jeans zime fade, nini nini. You know, those are the nads, eh? But guess what? The nads are now the multi-billionaires. Uh -huh. They began writing codes. Uko kwa back room, kwa you know, uko kwa 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 kwa, kwa bedroom, kwa, kwa bedrooms. Uko basement ya family. So you know the story of of, of Bill Gates, eh? Kwa garage. Thank you very much. The revenge of the nads. Now they're the multi-billionaires. The guys who are oil magnates, nini nini wa koko chini. You will never go wrong with investing in a technology. Okay. I'm a Microsoft certified professional. I'm a Microsoft certified web developer. I'm a Microsoft certified system engineer. I'm a Microsoft certified system developer. Okay? I'm very educated and I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm very educated as a Microsoft person because, because Microsoft doesn't like anybody who has not gone through their training to tinker with their systems. Okay, they want someone who is Microsoft certified, who knows their system in out. But they, I, I normally like telling people, uh, and I used to get a very high salary, very high, yeah? But it was just a salary to help me get by. But guess what? Microsoft has investors. Do you know that? Microsoft has heavy investors who probably went to Bill Gates and asked Bill Gates, how do we put money into Microsoft? to make money for the rest of our lives. How do we leverage on what Microsoft has produced, has developed, okay? And they gave their money. And those guys, they earn their return on investment is in billions of dollars per year. True or not true? <laughs> now, the money they gave Microsoft is the money that probably pays me, okay? But me, I just get a what? A salary, okay? I'm not building, not I'm not, not now I'm building wealth before. I never used to build wealth. I was just earning a salary. The people who are investors in Microsoft, they don't even know how those servers work. They don't know how to program. They don't care. I am, me, I am employed with their money to make sure their, 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 their dividends or their stocks don't go down, isn't it? My work is to make sure their stocks don't go down. And then I'm given like a small salary. I tell people whenever there's a technology, please be the investor. Okay, and uh, uh, near our home, an example is Safaricom. Safaricom has dealers, super dealers. I was being told about a guy who makes 400 million per month. And the guy is just, I think he's in his early 30s or something. He's, uh, he's very young. 400 million, what would you do with 400 million per month? Kabla, kabla, eh, hey, kabla umalize 400 million, ingine mesha rushwa. Kabla umalize ingine mesha rushwa. Yeah? <laughs> how do those guys make 400 M per month? You see, Safaricom dealers, how they make their money, wana uzanga ma SIM cards. Iso SIM cards, jama aligate dealership, and there are only 400 dealers in the whole country, 400 Safaricom dealers, and we are 32 million subscribers. The 32 million of us pay only 400 families. So what they do, what they did, they bought SIM cards. I mean, or rather they went and invested in Safaricom, they were given SIM cards. Then they opened shops all over. They went to Garissa, uh, Nyeri, and they got agents there to be selling the SIM cards. These days, or all these days, whatever SIM card they sold through their dealership, ikipiga SIMU tu wanalipwa. I'm serious, 4%. Anytime you make a hundred bob worth of airtime, uh, you call, you talk a hundred bob worth of airtime, they're paid four bob. If somebody sold a million SIM cards through the agents all over, now every SIM card in you know, two so moja per day. So moja tu, you need four bob, now a million SIM cards in his dealership. That is four million per day. Okay? Please go to YouTube and go to YouTube and look for a lady called Esther Mushemi. She's a top business, she's a top Safaricom dealer, okay? Esther Mushemi is now into real estate, she's, I mean, she's, she's one of the wealthiest people in Africa, okay? And the Safaricom dealership for a shot of a job, like a duka kamoja, town, Kibati Street or something like that, okay? 
what Esther Mushemi did, she positioned herself in a new technology which was called mobile technology. You understand what I'm saying? Another example is a guy called Mwanzia. Mwanzia, I've given that example several times today. Mwanzia alifika form 4, lakini musome mumalize, kusoma ni vizuri. But Mwanzia got to fourth form. Mwanzia alikuwa ukambani, someone in Safaricom akampigia simu akamwambia, Safaricom are looking for people called Mpesa dealers. Na Mpesa ni system ita kwa kwa simu, sujui pesa ina kwa transfer through the phone, he didn't even understand. Mpesa had not been done anywhere before. So Mwanzia came to Safaricom house in a meeting like this where there were, there were people interested to know what dealership is, Mpesa dealership. After that they were educated and they were given till, they invested money and they were given till numbers, isn't it? Okay? And they're told to go and open agencies all over Kenya for people to be selling, sending Mpesa, you know, to be depositing money and so on. To cut the long story short, I'm told Mwanzia makes about 150 million per month Okay, he's a guy who's not very well educated, he's not as educated as I am, the guy makes more money than I do, <laughs> okay, and even if, even, even if Mwanzia today, God forbid, he's not there, his family will continue making money from Safaricom M-Pesa network. Mwanzia doesn't know how M-Pesa servers work, me I'm the one who knows, <laughs> okay, he doesn't know, he doesn't need to know. What he did, he positioned himself in a new technology. Now we have a new technology. If we don't do nothing now, it will pass us. Because they say the world comes up with innovative technology, technologies every 10 years. If this one passes you, Ngoje 10 years, how old will you be from 10 years from now? When others are multimillionaires already. There's a new technology called blockchain technology. Blockchain technology. Okay, go to YouTube and look, read about that technology. Like you see so mesana, Julie, how will you make money? Like we've said, don't try to be an expert in any technology. Ask yourself, how do I make money from it? You understand? Okay? Blockchain technology was begun in 2008, and it was created to create what we call decentralization of databases. Okay, it is a long word. What it means is, Vitu kama shamba, kuna kuangana corruption kwa land because everybody knows where land records are stored, isn't it? Yes. They are stored where? At the house, uh, Upper Hill, <laughs> Nairobi. All you need to know, need to do is know someone in Athi house, atakufanyia connections, umwembe nitafutia shamba fulani, iko kisumu, it is on 10 acres. Iyo shamba, change jina ikuwe yangu. Tafuta mastamps zote nini nini, weka seal, nipatia what title did. After some time, the guy goes and puts a fence around that piece of land. Where so so na kujua nasema nani ameka a fence kwa shamba yangu? That old deed ndio hii, hata mimi ndio hii. You see, he comes with a duplicate at all deed. Because records are centralized, you understand? And corruption occurs a lot in many other aspects. Hata car registration, mtu anaibagari, anaika registration kama yako, rangi kama yako. Okay? So this centralization has caused very many problems. And even banks, so you know what happened to Chase Bank? People woke up in the morning and they're told you cannot access your money. Chase Bank imefungwa because there's some malpractices that went on which are causing investigation, isn't it? Okay? And that is why most people say, eh, mi pesa wacha niyeke tu kwa mpesa, ikaange tu pali na yona. Okay? So this centralization has caused many issues. Blockchain has come to decentralized data. Land records will now be stored on the internet. Okay? Where your land record, you're the only person who has access to it, nobody can manipulate it. Because the other machines, the other computers on the internet, they reject all manipulations. Because they're original, they know it, they have it, you understand? So I won't go deeply into that. That is why last year, uh, last year I think it was February 20, or 2017, 2018, President Uhuru Kenyatta, and please when you go to YouTube, look for President Uhuru Kenyatta speaking about blockchain in Strathmore University. He told the cabinet secretary for ICT, Joe Musheru, to set up a task force, 10 member task force, which includes, you know, people from Safaricom, you know, stakeholders, eh, to tell us how blockchain will be implemented in this country. And on July 25th, it was on Citizen TV, there's a feature where that blockchain uh, task force gave a report to the CS of ICT, which will later be forwarded to the president. The CS for ICT, 
um, has called Kenyans to participate and just look at the report and give their, their own recommendations and so on before the final copy is given to the president. What that report says is very interesting. It says we should introduce Bitcoin payment in this country. In case you don't know, how many know what Bitcoin is? How many have heard about Bitcoin? Okay, how many have Bitcoins? Okay, I have. Now, Bitcoin, let me just tell you. Blockchain technology, I said, is going to create decentralization. It is actually going to create a very big disruption in all industries where documents will be centrally look, uh, de uh, decentralized. Okay, that's what I've said that, isn't it? The people, the reason many countries want to adopt blockchain, including Germany and uh, Europe and so on, is because it's going to get rid of corruption and fraud. Okay? But the primary reason why blockchain was created is because in 2008 there was a global crisis in the US, a financial crisis where the US went under recession, went, went through recession. People who are millionaires, they became paupers. The dollar lost its, its value. At that time, some innovators came together and said, eh, hey, easy banks is there. What we'll do, we'll create a digital currency called Bitcoin. Okay? And this digital currency will be regulated using blockchain technology. In other words, blockchain technology is going to be like the central bank of Bitcoins, to be producing Bitcoins. So Bitcoin is a digital currency that is exchanged over the internet. If you want to store money in Bitcoin, you simply download a wallet from Google Play Store. Any bank says I make an app. I'm an app, you make a bank. Okay? I have Bitcoins. I store them on my phone. Okay? And you can store Bitcoins of even up to 10 million. Kwasi Muyako. Okay? It is like, a, I normally call it M-Pesa on steroids. Alright? Ni pesa iko kwa bank, wendo konayo. But when they created Bitcoins in 2008, they also created Bitcoin to not only be a digital currency, they also created it to be a store of wealth. There's a video I have of Bill Gates where he calls uh, Bitcoin digital gold. Bitcoin has the same value as gold. Kama wezi pata gold, tafadhali tafuta Bitcoin. Okay? Now, many people have begun acquiring Bitcoins. They began in 2009 when production started. And before, it was nerds who used to get bitcoins, who used to try and accumulate them. And they used to accumulate them using computer games. Well, when computer games, on a shinda bitcoins, and I bitcoins in nini. Me, I really envy them. I used to play games those days. Okay? With time, <laughs> Akina Bill Gates became interested. Why? Because the price of bitcoins started going up because of demand. With time, now countries are interested. Today I was making a presentation to somebody and we googled Russia and Bitcoins. Get, get what Russia is planning to do. Russia is planning to get its reserves, part of its reserved in Bitcoins. So you know every country keeps reserves in dollars, eh? Russia, Iran, Venezuela, Omeshansa Kusema Sisi, part of our reserves will be in Bitcoin. So demand of Bitcoin is growing. As a result, the value of Bitcoin is going up. Okay, now, how Akina Bill Gates and many other pe people get Bitcoins is they, they in their businesses, when I say manga, you can be paying us in what? You can be paying us in Bitcoin, okay? They're trying to accumulate them, okay? One of the first businesses in Kenya to accept Bitcoin as a payment is a certain lady in Nyeri. She owns a restaurant called Betty's Place. Betty's Place began accepting Bitcoin as payment last year. So she says you can pay in M-Pesa, cash or... Bitcoin. The other day, Kempinski. So you know Kempinski? Yeah. Kempinski, they began accepting money in Bitcoin. So Russia, on Azitafuta, businesses on Azitafuta, have, made, have given talks to very wealthy people who want to know about Bitcoin. And they know I, they know, I know, and they can give those talks. Eh? I'm a very good trainer. Eh? I've been called, and they tell me, please tell us how to get these Bitcoins. People are rushing to get them. As young people, we need to do what? To find out how we can start acquiring these bitcoins you will completely change your life i'm telling you okay the main reason people are looking for bitcoins is because it is limited in supply there will only be 21 million bitcoins in the world ever only 21 million bitcoins you see kenya has a population of about 45 million people 
21 million people are half of Kenyans. It means if everybody in Kenya is given one Bitcoin, only half of Kenyans will have Bitcoins, isn't it? Okay? Only half of Kenyans will have the number of Bitcoins the whole world is supposed to share. The whole of US, the whole of Japan, the whole of uh, Australia, the whole of Russia, okay? The whole of Africa, it is here to Kenya and to Nusu. That should give you an idea of how valuable Bitcoins are. Like why people want to get even just one for the family, okay? And also what blockchain does, as years go by, actually it's designed that every four years, blockchain produces fewer Bitcoins. It is good because you put a sales equal, it's like produce nyingi. The next time the Bitcoin supply will go down is next year, May 2020. We don't have time, okay? Now, because of the limited supply of Bitcoin and the fact that it reduces every four years, guess what the value of Bitcoin has been? In 2011, no, in 2010, one Bitcoin was less than a, than a dollar. It was 0 0.0025 dollars. It was actually 25 cents Kenya shillings, 2011, 2010. Meaning if you had one bob, you'd have bought four Bitcoins, okay? In 2011, one Bitcoin became 100 bob. Because people started realizing, hey, this thing is very valuable. It became a dollar, 100 shillings, 2011. Guess what the price of Bitcoin is now, today, one Bitcoin. Arthur, how much is one Bitcoin? Uh, one Bitcoin is 830,000 shillings. Ule, 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 ule mtu alinunua. Listen, the person who bought for 25 cents in 2010, one Bitcoin, now has 830,000 Kenya shillings. The person who bought for a shilling, which was, which was four bitcoins, eh? right now, the guy is worth 3.2 million. Alinunua shillingi moja. Guess what? They are saying next year, like I told you, the next time the production is going down is next year. They are saying next year, one bitcoin is going to be 10 million. What you say, equal 830,000 Kenya shillings. They are saying in the next 10, in the next 10 years, in the next 10 years, one Bitcoin will be 100 million Kenya shillings. Moja.